make no mistake multi cloud is the future no organization is going to just use one cloud to manage their resources if you look at uh, microsoft and oracle's partnership that's one such example where even at a service provider level multiple you know clouds are getting together to offer better services for companies choosing the right infrastructure as a code tool is very important for the organizations to manage uh, multiple cloud service providers and learning the right iac tool for your future is also very important so one such tool that's trending year over year and if you look at the google trends you will see that uh, the graph is just going up and the reason why is that it supports multiple cloud service providers and it has libraries for azure oracle aws and google cloud and and it is an open source tool so that tool is called terraform hey what's up guys my name is gk by end of this video you're going to learn terraform how to use terraform to provision resources in google cloud so basically the scenario is that you know you're going to use terraform uh, from a client location for example from my desktop and from my desktop i'm going to control the resources of uh, google cloud and you know create resources in google cloud so before i go into the demo uh, why don't you click on the subscribe button so that you're going to get more such videos on terraform or any such tools so let's go into the demo and learn about this tool and this is going to be a super helpful video it's going to be easy video for you all to learn terraform and start playing around with that so what you're seeing here is a very high level overview of um, how the use case will look like so when you're using terraform and you want to provision resources in multiple clouds you would ideally want your terraform to be outside of the cloud in my case i'm using terraform in my laptop and then i'm going to provision resources on google cloud so you can also do the same thing uh, with aws uh, or azure the syntax also is very declarative um, you don't have to learn any programming language to code it so it it has its own syntax and it has uh, its own configurations uh, the way you want like for example the way you write ansible in yaml so as part of this demo i'm going to fire the terraform from my desktop and then i'm going to create a compute engine in google cloud now for that I need to install Terraform. So currently I have uh, Ubuntu, which is running on my Windows desktop. So I'm going to install Terraform. For that, let's go to the website and download the Linux uh, Terraform package. Um, I would rather get copy link address and then All right, so once you have the package, you can unzip it by using terraform so you you can see that uh, it's in executable format you know you can set this path something like this export path is equal to dollar path and All right, so once you set this, so you can do Terraform. To check the version of Terraform. So right now we have Terraform installed. So the next thing what we what we have to do is we have to write the Terraform file. So basically Terraform file, like I've said, is a very simple file. You know, it's a it's in a declarative format. And for that, you can either use um, code your favorite ide um, i use code because it, uh, it it recognizes the extension of the terraform and it can give you uh, it can highlight the syntaxes properly so the extension of the file is .tf you know create that file .tf so wherever you're running from for instance if you're running terraform uh, from windows you can directly do it from your uh, windows desktop itself and since i'm running linux on top of windows you know i, I would have to create the file here uh, in my linux client the syntax starts with the provider so here what we are saying is provider is google and the version number and credentials obviously we have to give the service account if you remember my last video when i was discussing about the service account you know if you want to connect to google from your desktop or laptop or from anywhere outside of uh, google you have to use service account so which uh, i'm going to create right now i'm going to pass this service account json file here and the project id as well you know you have to give the right project id uh, so i have to fill that information here so this is the provider block and if you're using for aws then you would use aws as a provider 
and I'm going to share all the links of Terraform website where you can get the right provider and the syntax of uh, the provider. So this block, once you write this block, the next is the important thing, which is resource. So in the resource block, we have to mention the resources that we're trying to create. So as you know here, um, it is Google underscore compute underscore instance. So if you have a prefix Google, uh, Terraform will assume that uh, you know the provider is from Google, and it should uh, it, it tries to create compute instance, and this is an app server. Uh, you can give any name here. Basically, you can give in a web server name. So this whole thing will form the resource ID. So you can reference this in the future blocks. So I'll come up with more videos on how we can use different uh, you know configuration items but for now we're going to just use provider and resource for this demo to create a resource in uh, gcp so as you can see terraform supports many providers you know google cloud um, you know alibaba cloud aws rabbitmq and even oci azure so this is the beauty of um, open source where you know people will try to contribute as much as they can and they can obviously you will have more providers supporting that With respect to Google Cloud, you can see the documentation specifically from the Google Cloud provider. So when you go to this provider's link, uh, when you click on this link, you know, it comes, takes you to here. And then you can see specifically for which resource you want to create. Since we are trying to create for uh, Compute Engine, right, um, instance in Compute Engine, we have to click on that and then you will get an example here, which is what I have used um, in, in my file here as well. And, and you can play around with this descriptions, you know, you can attach disk or you can change the network interface, et cetera, et cetera. You can also create multiple other resources. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to create a service account. So obviously I have showed you how to create service account, but right now I'm going to create a new one for this demo. So I already have my console opened up in a new tab. I'm going to IAM service account or you can just try service account directly in search tab. Okay, now there are a few default service accounts, but let's create a new service account for this. And I'm going to name it as demo TF. So role, ideally, if you if you are trying to create only for Compute Engine, we would want to use for Compute Engine. But for this demo, I'm just going to use uh, Project Editor, which is not at all recommended. Uh, like I was mentioning in my previous IAM videos, you know, you would want to you always go with the roles of uh, the least privilege principle. So you would either, you would only create the role that is required for this action. But for now, I'm just going with Editor. continue and create a key json all right so i have a service account and now i have to populate this file so for that i need my project id which is youtube demo so let me copy that project id here and then the file that I've created is um, this JSON file. So I'll copy that JSON file here. So zone US Central 1C, since I've mentioned zone already there, I'll, I'll uh, remove this from here. Okay, so this looks good. Um, I'll copy the whole configuration from here and then create main.tf okay so you have all the contents save it so there are three main important commands that you have to remember in terraform right so first command is terraform init so what terraform init does basically is it will identify that you are using a google um, provider so it will download all the packages of the google provider and then so the beauty of Terraform again is you don't have to provision the resource to know actually whether the configuration is working or not. So there is a command uh, called Terraform plan where it will tell you what is the thing that's going to happen before even your infrastructure is created. 
and then the actual command is terraform apply that will apply the configuration and um, you know provision the resources on the provider so we're going to do terraform in it okay so the output here is download downloading plugin for provider google so it found out the provider from the file the main.tf um, so see, if you give main.tf you don't have to explicitly mention the file that you're trying to execute when you do initialization so when i ran the initial terraform plan i got a couple of errors so i'll show you uh, the errors which i got so basically the errors are it was expecting a mandatory parameter called network underscore interface and it was also expecting boot underscore disk missing argument so these two are the arguments that it was expecting before and obviously um, the block type so you know for these you can either get these parameters from here so that that way it will be easier for you or you can search for any google documentation so I, I got the information from here and then i made the changes to the file i'm going to copy the file in the description as well and now if you see the file the final file that i have is this so the provider i haven't changed anything there and the resource is where i have uh, made the changes with respect to boot underscore disk um, because you know you have to obviously choose the image type when you're trying to provision compute engine right so i mean instance in the compute engine which i haven't done before so um, this is what i have changed here and the network interface i kept it as default now let's try to run terraform plan and see what is the output the terraform state in memory prior to plan so what it's saying is that it is going to create the resource this resource is going to be created and these are the things that are going to happen so the boot disk is true you know and the mode is read write and the image is so and so which we have provided in the in the settings in the configuration file the default is network so let's run terraform apply one change yes all right so error creating net creating inter instance uh, invalid value of uh, field interfaces so the reference network resource cannot be found okay so the reason for that is i might have deleted the default network so there is no network at all so i'm going to create a new vpc network and then make it as a default automatic internal lp ssh and then create okay so now i have the default network which i've created so let's try again this command and let's see what we're going to get this time. Yes. Okay, I think it is doing something right now uh, because I'm not getting the error. So let's go to the compute engine. Okay, as you can see, it created successfully um, in my project in US Central 1C and the name of the instance is primary application server. So let's quickly check that. Okay, so we have a primary application server successfully created. The good thing about Terraform is it maintains the state of uh, the infrastructure that you have created. So all you have to do if you want to destroy the infrastructure that you have created is just say terraform destroy my bad destroy and then it will try to destroy um, the instances that you have created or the infrastructure that you have created. I would strongly suggest to use terraform even right now when you're playing around with any cloud service provider that way it will be easy for you to 
you know delete the resources because sometimes what happens is you create resources you practice and you forget end of the day you will be billed for that if you're not using the free tire so while this is destroying one quick question i have for you all um, feel free to put that in the comment section let's say we don't want to use terraform so what is the equivalent infrastructure as a code tool inside gcp to provision resources so leave that in the comment section and we'll discuss more about the tool in the future videos so that's all for this video and thanks for watching and let me know in the comment section if you are facing any issues with this and i hope this was very helpful for you all thank you bye